Holmes's makeup and accessories. With the help of this, his disguises are very impressive. A scandal in Bohemia. Holmes's very first adventure. But why is he keeping this journal? Holmes is not the type to archive his past adventures. Oh, the photo of Irene Adler. I'm not surprised that Holmes kept it. To him, she is the only woman. He perceives her as being so superior to the rest of her sex that he can't even speak her name. Could he have felt something close to love for her? Who knows? He must have noticed that I was diluting his hidden vials and wanted to prevent me from doing so. It's the one time in my life that I have proven to be stronger than my friend Holmes. Alas, I cannot boast about it to him, for who knows what his reaction might be. Holmes's sidearm. I'll leave you now, miss. Coming up, love. Did you find Gent find something hidden under his mattress then? No, but I have something in this vial that will prevent you from suffering tonight. And here's my card. My name is Dr. Watson. You must promise to visit me at my office next Monday. Together, we can find a solution to your problem, dear child. First, however, I must pass through this door. Say, Eddie, this gent is one of my pals. One of the guys will pledge for him. He's in the mood for a bit of fun. Let him through, will ya? I'll leave you now, miss. Let's go, Ginger! Go, go! Go, Tracy! Barnes! Dr. Watson! What are you doing here? I've been looking for you, Barnes. You must open your shop for me. Out of the question, Doctor. I've bet all of my money and then some on this turtle. And if I leave the table right now, who knows if someone won't try to cheat me? Go, Ginger! But why are you gambling to begin with? It's not like you at all. Go, Ginger! I needed a large sum of money for my new experiments. I heard about this place, and I almost lost everything on the dogfight. But the turtles stay true, and I'll win it back. Go, Ginger! Go! Oh, no! Come on, Barnes. Time to pay up. <laughs> it's just that, you see, I'm broke, Dr. Watson. Could you loan me some money? Fine. How much does he owe you? Eighty-one pounds and sixpence. How much? I'll pay you back, Dr. Watson, in a few weeks. Or a few months. In a few years. I don't have the money presently, but I would be happy to sign a promissory note. Tough luck. I want cash. Find me some, or your little friend will never see the light of day again. Please, Doctor. I beg you. So, Doctor, have you finally found your friend? What's going on? It would seem that i found some news. This poor sod is in it for £80. I've given him credit for a week now. I want my dough. But this gentleman is Dr Watson. He's well known throughout the area. He should be able to guarantee... Not bloody likely. Cash or nothing doing. If I understood properly, Doctor, you must take Barnes from here to save his life as well as solve your own problem. Exactly. But it seems that may not be advisable. Say, mister, can I speak to you in private? Can do. Got it. 
Doc, it could be that I'd be happy with, I don't know, some jewellery, for example, some nice trinkets, a trophy or a medal. Dr Watson will certainly find something appropriate. Not to worry. I'll wait for you here, Doctor, to ensure that nothing happens to your friend Barnes. I'll do my best. You, Barnes, deserve to be left at the mercy of these rogues. Where will I find something to give to these rogues? Yes, the only solution is to search our lodgings for something to pay the thugs from the Golden Lion with. The Order of the Legion of Honor bestowed upon Holmes. I don't see anything other than that. Good God, if he notices it is missing. Tomorrow I will have to buy it back from those crooks once I have found the necessary funds. So, Doc, did you find the miracle drug that will stop your patient from dying? Enough, you rascal. I'll return tomorrow to buy it back. Plus interest, you hear? Thank you, Doctor. A thousand thanks. You're a good guy, Doctor. A real saviour. Now, Barnes, you must open your shop without further delay. I don't know how to thank you, Doctor. How can I help you? Tell me what you need and I'll have it for you within the hour. I need the most in-depth reference work you have on the Knights of the Round Table and King Arthur, with heraldic illustrations if possible. Certainly. I think I have something somewhere. It's very rare, but I don't recall exactly where it is. Well, let's look for it together. Here, chivalry and spiritualism. Can we turn the round table? This is it, am I right? Ah, yes, that's the one. A very rare and thorough book. I'll take it. You can deduct it from the amount that you still owe me, Barnes. I must be off, and... Wait, Dr. Watson. I just wanted to say before you left. Wait, where did I put it? There. A, a moment, please. The book in which you're interested is an extremely rare edition. My records show that its price is 98 quid 9p. It's a beautiful book. Quite rare, that. It's your good luck that I'm in a hurry, Barnes. Otherwise, I'd stuff this book down your throat, all 98 pounds and 9 pence worth. There you are at last, Watson. You took your time. Do you have what I asked for? 
It wasn't without difficulty, but here is a book that will help us. A worthless book written by an unreliable author. Obviously a remnant that Barnes couldn't sell and presented you free of charge. You need to be charitable on occasion, Watson. That little bookstore could have used a few of your farthings. If you say so, Holmes. Fine. This should do the trick. While you were dallying, I was able to translate this inscription. I've just finished, and this is the transcription. This song mentions specific pole weapons. Watson, stay here to ensure that the creature behind the wall doesn't escape. Where are you going now, Holmes? To find the solution to open this door. You must be Sherlock Holmes, am I right? The Chief told me to help you. What can I do? Can you help me to identify certain weapons that are found here? No problem. That's easy. Show them to me, and I'll tell you what they are. A partisan, a hasta. It's a bardish. A type of pole axe without hooks. A large axe, really. These weapons are heavy. I can only take two at a time. something. These days, we call this a spear. During the Middle Ages, it was called a glaive. This hook is a beck de Corbin, or crow's beak as it's sometimes called. It was complemented by a hammer or spike. These weapons are heavy. I can only take... Ah, Mr. Holmes, that, quite simply, is a sword. A morning star, a club-like weapon, quite popular with the English army. made a mistake. Time to think. Elementary. Well done, Holmes. Look, it's a bat, Holmes. Indeed, Watson, it is scared of our light, as many members of its species are. It will be very hard to attract it, and even harder to capture it. If only we could disorient it. Perhaps by pointing a beam to flash a bright light at it. Listen, stay here and prevent it from escaping while I go look. The 
This instrument will give me a strong, bright light. Watch out! Protect your eyes! You got it, Holmes! And as a bonus, you got a nice photograph also. What do you suggest I do with a photograph of a bat, Watson? Give it to Sergeant Wayne. It's his camera. The animal is holding a small piece of paper between its paws. The message written on this paper is illegible. his name is. This bird seems to be remarkably well trained. How can I find your name? Beautiful but impish. You search for her name. Long ago on you she played a trick. Or was it your heart that she did prick? German bird or eagle? They're one and the same. Elementary. The message written on this paper is illegible. Well done, Holmes. We are supposed to find six birds, and there is one missing. Two possibilities. Either one of the birds has flown and taken our hopes with it. Or, despite our misfortune, there is still a chance that the last bird is completely diurnal and is perched somewhere awaiting the day. What shall we do, Holmes? Stay up, Watson, and wait. Wait for the dawn and the first signs of life from the bird. Watson! Watson! I hear a bird's call. It would appear that our prayers were answered. We must seek it quickly, Watson. Incredible. Based on this bird book, it is a Lemergier. I have heard about them, but I have never seen one with my own eyes. Since you never leave our lodgings, I'm surprised that you've even heard talk of them. Now what? Lemergier, Watson. If only it was Greek and had a great big turtle. A uh, what? A turtle, Watson. Have you never heard of Aeschylus, the philosopher? I must still be sleeping. This is all a dream. Maybe the whole thing has been a dream. It must be the side effects of the nightmare I was having. Any moment, Mrs. Hudson will... Watson, get a hold of yourself, man. You aren't dreaming. Our mission, England's honor. Holmes, did I really hear you talk about a Greek, bearded vulture, a turtle, and a philosopher all in the same sentence? Indeed, Watson. Listen carefully. Aeschylus was an ancient Greek philosopher. He had a phobia of enclosed spaces and would never enter a building of any kind. This was as a result of the fact that it was predicted that he would die by being crushed by a roof. Do you know how Aeschylus died, Watson? His skull was smashed by a turtle that fell from the skies. We cannot escape our destiny. A turtle carries its house on its back, and its shell is its roof. But where did this turtle come from, and why did it fall exactly on the head of this poor man? Some would say that it was the divine power attached to the prophecy. There is, however, a more pragmatic explanation. The Lemergier, or bearded vulture, likes to eat the bone marrow from the cadavers of large animals. To extract the marrow, it grabs the bone in its claws and flies to a great height. 
Then it lets go over a rocky area where the bones smash and split open, giving it a lavish feast. Some of them have been observed in Greece behaving the same way with turtles as they normally do with bones to get at the flesh. Aeschylus was of an advanced age at the time of his death, and his bald head would have reflected light like a smooth rock. Had he been under the shelter of a house, he would never have been hit with a turtle in the first place. I'll let you ponder the philosophical points of the matter, but coming back to our Lemergie, we'll need some bait and something with which to capture the beast. Holmes, I will take care of finding a turtle. I'll return as soon as possible. Really, Watson? I commend your industry and valour. That leads me to find something to trap it. However, Holmes, would you happen to have a few quid on you? No, but you can make a detour via Baker Street. There must be at least ten sovereigns hidden in our lodgings. Just a little memory exercise that I set up. At the boredom, you know. Ah, a sovereign. Elementary, my dear Holmes. A sovereign. Perfect. A sovereign. Perfect. This is how Holmes organizes his correspondence that is awaiting responses. If only if only if only his clients saw that. It's a coal bucket in which Holmes stores his cigars. What a strange idea. Colonel Gordon, it was during the affair of the lodger in treatment. The lodger in treatment. The lodger in treatment. My eccentric companion keeps his shag tobacco in the toe of this Persian slipper. Treaty on Cornish, the Celtic language of the Celtic language of the Cornish people. And here, medieval pottery. Hmm. Holmes has an interesting taste in reading. It was in this statue that we found the famous Black Pearl of the Borgias. Oh, what a mess! Ha <laughs> ha! A sovereign! Elementary, my dear Holmes. Strange place to stow money. A sovereign. Perfect. Ha <laughs> ha! A sovereign. Elementary, my dear Holmes. Strange place to stow money. What? This accursed statue is still here? I have asked Mrs. Hudson to remove it for us. A sovereign. Perfect.
sovereign. Perfect. How much for one of these turtles? The champion isn't within your means, chap. The loser will set you back ten sovereigns. How much for one of these turtles? The champion isn't within your means, chap. The loser will set you back ten sovereigns. While you wait, Watson, I need something big with which to catch the Lamagier. It's a rather large bird. This net would be perfect if it wasn't in such a pitiful state. I'll need some string to repair it. This string is perfect. I'll get to work while I await Watson. Here's your turtle, Holmes. Watson, you impress me. This specimen will be ideal. I need to find somewhere to put it down, Watson. Stand back, Watson, as we wait for our bearded friend to descend. I hope you'll be able to catch it on the first try, Holmes. Ginger would never forgive me. Ginger? Yes, the turtle. Of course. Of course. There's our starving friend, Watson, and the last paper. At last. I thought we'd never succeed. Now can we head back to our lodgings and sleep for part of the day? We have until this evening. We are heading back to Baker Street, Watson, but not to sleep. We have time for a meal and then we must make haste to the next location that we will ascertain with the help of these messages. Uh, but I'm done for, Holmes. As Ashila said, I think the slain care little if they sleep or rise again. Come, Watson, make haste.
I can no longer take it, regardless where these papers that were found on those damn birds at the Tower of London lead, you'll be going without me, Holmes. Plus, this business cannot remain secret much longer, and Scotland Yard would like to take over the case again, and I would gladly give it to them. You are correct, Watson. Even if Chief Warder Smith sent two-thirds of his men on holiday to minimize the risk of leaks, the authorities would be aware with very little delay that something was afoot in London and they would want to take over the case, as you say. But Scotland Yard is once again facing a strong opponent and is up against a resounding failure. There is no question of my stepping down or even thinking of resting, not while England is being menaced by Arsene Lupin. As you wish, Holmes. If only I had known that one day you would be giving me lessons in patriotism. Now, try to figure out the meaning of these messages. But how, Holmes? They are illegible, Watson. But as Lupin seems to be a magician when the mood strikes him, it may well be a conjuring trick. <laughs> <laughs>